Good morning everyone and welcome. Shall we begin with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thankful for all the blessings. We pray that you be with us as we uh, discuss Desire of Ages, uh, the Sabbath. We know that it's a very important day, it's the most important day of the week. So we pray, Lord, for the presence of thy Holy Spirit as we glean what we can out of these passages. In Jesus' worthy and precious name, Amen. Amen. Shall we begin with him? 367, Rescue the Perishing. We'll, we'll start the first verse. Anyone for the second verse? I'll go for the second one. Thank you. Anyone for the third verse? Verse 3, anyone? I will. Right, thank you. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, search them in pity from sin and the grave. We for the erring ones, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful. Jesus will say. Verse two, please. Though they are slighting him, still he is waiting, waiting the penny the child to receive. Plead with them earnestly, Plead with them gently, he will forgive if they only believe. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it, strength for thy labor the Lord will provide. Back to the narrow way, patiently win them. Tell the poor wanderer our Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Amen. Thank you for the beautiful singing. We're just going to share the screen. So this is where we got to. Um, the, as we, uh, we'll just do a little recap. Then there was a question, wasn't there? Um, the Pharisees were being legalistic about the disciples eating the corn on the Sabbath. Uh, you know, they, they, they just seemed to follow Jesus around just to try and trip him up or t to find fault. And, and that's, that shouldn't be the attitude of anyone. You know, you, yeah. don't, you just don't go, you just don't look at people to find their faults and then, you know, um, being, being, you know, uh, trying to cause trouble for them. If you see somebody in a fault, you, you lift them up, you don't put them down. Uh, but Jesus didn't have any faults anyway. But he, he, they wanted they, uh, they wanted to get to Jesus through his disciples, so they, they, they're watching them as well, and anything they thought was wrong, um, they got the told Jesus. Uh, there are people like that. They um, they if they make it the ministry, don't they? They make it the ministry to to find fault with others, and uh, you, you never hear a, a a word of encouragement about anybody from them. And um, you know, uh, and and if they can't get the person, get the person, they get somebody that's close to them. You know, that's going to hurt, hurt them, and find fault with them and tell them. You know, that's that's what the, that's what the Pharisees were doing. That was their ministry. You know, it's, it's a sad to have an attitude like that. Um, does anybody want to say anything more about this before we go into the question that was um, left yesterday? Any any more thoughts on this? Um, uh, these these three paragraphs. Well, I don't see any hands. And yeah, there was uh, there was about um, 
uh, lot of the, um, the doctors and nurses and care workers working on the Sabbath. That was a, a that was a, a question. A question. And we didn't get time to uh, and discuss eating, it. And th there was um, and someone said about eating in restaurants on the Sabbath, which is a no no. Mm. You know, it's, it's making somebody else work. It says it says in the commandment. They'll send all their daughters and all that, you know, the, the stranger that is within the gates, you know, none of you should work, you know, like that, like making them, and making money. In uh, business, yeah. Yeah, making money on the Sabbath, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the question was asked about nurses and doctors working on the Sabbath. Um, anybody got any thoughts on this? I mean, there are essential things that they've got to do. Mm. you know, look after the sick. Well, I worked in a service that was 24-7, 52 weeks a year. Mm. And uh, I thank God that um, I never had to work on the Sabbath. Any job that I had, I explained about Sabbath. Um, and um, by the grace of God, uh, I, ne I never had to work on it. I was prepared to work any other hours mm. um, and to fit in in uh, um, situations to help out always. Uh, but I never I never had to work on Sabbath, and I, I thank God for that. What I don't understand is where, um, you know, nurses I've known, they only work part-time, but yet they work on Fridays and through Sabbath. If they're only working part time, why can't they negotiate to work on other days of the week? That, that's one thing I'm, I, I don't quite understand. Well, it's, it's time and half on the Sabbath. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think double time Sunday and time and half on Sabbath. It used to be when we worked anyway. I remember when they wanted us to work on the Sabbath when we worked at, at Plessy and the for the um, foreman or the manager he says if i write to your priest he says um will it, it you know and, and explain why we want you to work on the sabbath he says it's not up to the priest i says it's god's commandment not the priest's commandment as we don't have priests in our church anyway you know so they let us come in on a sunday didn't they mm. um to, to finish this work and we saved we saved them thousands of pounds while coming on on sunday remember the text of it told you a few days ago when the rain came through the through the ceiling and um <laughs> we was able to ship we able to move all the work if i hadn't been there they would have been ruined so the lord bless them <laughs> um we've got a couple of hands i think uh, the first one was sister Sitali. Yeah. thank you Well, thank you, sisters. Uh, good morning. I just wanted to say that there is a clip that someone posted right after the um, reading, the session yesterday morning from, from Randy's kid answering this very question. I don't know if everyone looked at it, but I'll just quickly say what he said, that um, uh, it's a no, no, no uh, for, for, for Sabbath keepers to to work, to work, but for uh, for the frontline workers, they have to. If there is an emergency, um, then they they are called out to go and save a life. Then they can, but the wage that comes out of that work does is does not belong to them. They need to give it away for to some fund which which takes care for people that cannot afford healthcare. Or some such, and uh, I believe that that is the right way to go with it. But but you, it's it's uh, it's also that you don't uh, you don't arrange as long as you if you are not arranging for yourself to be to pre arranging for yourself to be on the roster for the Sabbath day. It's it's like an emergency. This is how I understood it. And if I were a the frontline worker, this is how I would also do it. Only if there is, if it is absolutely, there is nothing, nothing else that can be, no one else that can take that place, uh, the place to save a life. Otherwise, yeah, thank you. But the clip is still there. People can go and listen to it. Yeah, 
Yes, thank you. No, I don't think we saw the quote at the end because uh, uh, I saw there was a couple of quotes, but time had run out. But thank you for um, telling us what it said. Um, yes, um, it's okay to be on call if you are a frontline worker to save a life. Uh, but but and, and I've read that that you, you, the, what you don't take the wages for it, or you you give them do do some good something. You don't take it for yourself. You can put it in the church or or give you know. Uh, yeah. do something that's um that can uh, you know help someone. Uh, Ellen White says in um, I think it's Desire of Ages page two o seven, where she said there should be no gainful employment mm. on the Sabbath. Yeah. And she says that in connection with the sick, mm. um, that um, that the sick should still be looked after, uh, which of course is correct. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. But not for not that's for yeah. financial gain. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, that's right. Yeah, that's true. Is there an, there's another hand. Yeah, we've got Sister Dion. Um, good morning. Um, I was just going to say um, everything on the same line. Um, Rani Skeet um, made mention of um, nurses and doctors and care workers and et cetera um, working on the Sabbath. What, but, you know, we can dig around it as much as we want. What does the law say? Yeah, it tells us that it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Lord has given us six days and we shouldn't labor in those in, in we should be able to labor on the sixth day but the sabbath is the lord our god it's about what does the lord say he says it and and we have to abide by it we, we have to follow his commandment i mean we are nearly on the threshold of the lord coming so it, it's time that we as a people adhere to what he tells us to do um, he says, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. And that's what we ought to do. You know, obedience is better to obey than to disobey. Yes. So, yeah, I agree with everything that everyone said. Um, we ought to obey God. Amen. Yes, thank you. We all seem to be on the same page of this one. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Sister Aneska, please. Good morning. Mm -hmm. This same speaker, he's been posed this question on numerous occasions and I've looked at various different clips and able to say that his um, his response is consistent. In, in one of them, I don't know if he mentioned it in the one that was shared on the group yesterday, but in one of them, he did add a word of caution where he was saying that if you allow one um, to be working sort of like for, um, even if it's for like gainful employment, you open the floodgates for other areas of occupation where they deem it to be like an emergency where you're serving other people. Um, doctors and nurses is one that people are most familiar with, but he was then throwing out the question, okay, what about if say you, are a fireman or a firewoman or what about if you're a police officer or a plumber who may get a call about some emergency water that's flooding anywhere and so forth but that was that was something that he would that was something that he was um reminding people to and encouraging them to consider that if you allow it for one then you then you're going to open the floodgates for all other areas to also say, oh, well, what I do is important and I need to work, I need to work to help that person in that situation. Thank you. Yes, that's true. That's very true. It does open the floodgates. Um, uh, but it does say um, these people can be on call just for emergencies. They don't go into work just in case there's an emergency. Just be on call if there's if there's a house on fire and you're a fireman. You don't stand and watch it burn. You don't stand and watch it burn until after Sabbath. You know, or, or you don't watch the, if it, the, the plumbers, you know. So if there was a, a flood in the church and you were, you were a plumber, you wouldn't say, well, I'm going to leave it till after Sabbath. You'd do something. 
you know, because you're there and you're, and you're on call. But it's when you did deli deliberately go and work on the Sabbath, you know, just to, you know... Just um, for gain. Yeah, just for gain. And, um, you know, uh, as it says, as Jesus says, you would, you, you'd take, if, if the ass fell into the ditch, you wouldn't leave it there over Sabbath, you'd take it out. You know, you'd help it out the ditch. So, uh, you know, it's... Um, but it, I think it's, delib it's when you deliberately go and work on the Sabbath. You, you, it's part of your um, your hours that you do each week. I think that's when um, uh, it becomes a, a real problem. Uh, we have uh, Sister Metron next. Yes, good morning, everyone. Um, I should say absolutely in what everyone has said. That's very true. Um, yes, we see some people trying to discuss to say what if somebody's on call like uh, our sisters are just saying here it doesn't matter whether you are on call or whatever if you are on call that's a special knowledge that is needed that you ought to go and give a service that you ought to go and give you just know that you are still on call but doing the service of god even when you are being called to run even in an emergency or whatever, as long as it's just on the Sabbath, you are just doing the service to God. Because um, if we read the book of First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, I'll quickly share that with you. It says, verse 31 and 33, 31 says, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Then verse 33 says, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Whether you are on call, make sure that call on call you are on. You are doing it to the profit of the saving of other souls, the saving of God, to glorify God, whatever you do. That includes on call. That includes a shift pattern. That includes every worker that decides to walk out of their house to go to work on the Sabbath in air, whatever work, whether construction, whether it be you know, you know mechanics, whether it be uh, whatever, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Are you doing that work to glorify God or to bring glory to yourself? Are you doing that work to profit God or to profit yourself? If we remove ourselves out of the picture completely on the Sabbath, regardless of the job that we do, regardless of the profession that we do, we do all to the glory of God. You know that when you are walking out of your house, you are going to save God for the souls that are perishing. Then we are in on the standing on the platform of truth. So we just have no excuse by working on the Sabbath in any way at all because we do this to the glory of God, not to ourselves. Thank you. Thank you for those thoughts. It's true, we, everything we do must be done to the glory of God. Are there any more hands? No, that's... Uh, hands. Yes. Oh, yeah, Sister Sylvia. Yeah. I'll let Sister, Sister Sylvia and then I'll come. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. I just have a question. Um, we, we in our church had a, a group of people that um, used to go out. And, and for me, this is so plain, but I just want to hear everyone's, everyone's thoughts on it. Um, I know Christ says it is good to do good on the Sabbath, and we see it in Scripture. So we had a group um, of brothers and sisters, and we we used to go out to give the great controversy once every month. We would choose a town, um, Sabbath afternoon, we would go out and do that. And this became a topic of controversy in the church that a group of people were, were going out on a Sabbath to give the great controversy. And slowly but surely, <laughs> um, slowly but surely, it, it became a, an issue until a, a meeting was even held about this, this issue. 
that now we were told that that doing this is fine, but it is it, it shouldn't be on the Sabbath. Um, my conviction is is different, but 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 it came about that they said we can't do it either in divine hour or or Sabbath afternoon. We mostly did it Sabbath afternoon actually, but it it was stopped anyway. What what is everyone's thoughts on that? Thank you. Actually, um, they, they suggested, sorry, I didn't finish it. They suggested that we can continue doing this, but on any other day, Sunday, any other day, but not the Sabbath. So what's, what's everyone's um, take on this? Thank you. Uh, you mentioned divine hour. I do believe that Sabbath is a day of worship to God. And so the church meeting together for Sabbath school and divine service think that those services should go ahead. Um, but giving out literature on a Sabbath afternoon, I can't see how that defiles the Sabbath. I mean, if there are young people's services, there are people who can deal with that and others can go out giving. Uh, I, I, but I do believe that the main services, Bible study and divine uh, worship, uh, I can't see the reason for going out then. Can do it in the afternoon. Uh, but I think that those services uh, are special Sabbath services which should be followed. Yes, I would agree with that, that divine service and Sabbath school, we need to be there. And then but in the afternoon, um, it's up to the individual. Because it was MV, missionary volunteers to start with. That's what that was where the AY was. Uh, that's how it formed, and that was that was um, doing evangelism. So then, then they've just uh, made it AY stay inside, which you know, um, and no, I, I I agree. The morning services you need to be there. It's the afternoon services do evangelism. Uh, so thank you, Sister Ingrid, for that. Uh, Sister and uh, Nus Nuskia um, is the next one, please. Yes, I do concur with what has been said, especially about, um, say, for instance, doing it in the afternoon. You do notice that other faiths that give out, that do um, give out literature and so forth as part of their mission, so to speak, the majority of them they'll be doing it during the during the other days of the week but on the day which they have designated as their day of worship you don't normally see them out distributing their literature at that time but what the sister was describing is something that happened in our congregation not long after we first started in that there was a group at just around about the time of the divine service about to start they would then go out to one of the nearby villages to do um, street preaching and to hand out books at the same time. There was a gentleman that was leading it and he would be inviting other people to join him. And seems we're a small congregation, you would notice when so many people left. And one on one particular occasion, it was so obvious that there was a young person who was taking part as part of the platform party leading out from the front but then just before we're about to have the sermon he got up to say oh we're going to have the, the singing of the next hymn but oh can somebody lead it out because I need to go now with the group to um do what it is that we need to do and then just like picked up his stuff and walked out and we were just sort of like uh what's going on sort of thing so then somebody else from the floor just had to like um get up and fill in what he was doing but I concur with the with the thought that was shared that during the worship during the worship time of the divine service and the sabbath sabbath school um to have that bit for God and the afternoon which is what um as 
as it's been as it's been mentioned, was originally originally um MV. That's a that's an ideal opportunity, and I don't see why they were saying that you can't do it during that time. Thank you. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. It's true. A missionary volunteers. There was a song. They even made a song about it, didn't they? Uh, but that seems to have gone by the board with many churches. It's just stay in all day. And uh, now we've got uh, Sister Dorothy and then Brother Desire. Thank you for those comments that have gone um that have gone uh, out from other people. I agree with the what has been said. But I just wanted to mention that there are people who feel that giving out the great controversy on the Sabbath afternoon is not uh, the right thing to do. But as for me, I, um, I don't have a problem with that at all because the same, the same meeting, board, church board meeting, like the sister has said, there was a meeting uh, to discourage people from going out, that meeting knows what the spirit of prophecy says about our mission to preach the three angels' messages. And they never have these meetings to encourage the church to go out to distribute these books. Yet, when a, a small group of people go out, they will meet and talk about it. This is common, not only in your church, the sister who has raised this up. And as for me, I would go. I would not listen to any of the leaders telling me about the great controversy to stop or anything because this is not a book that is liked by many people in the church and leaders. Um, if they knew our mission, who we are as Adventists, and why God raised us. There shouldn't even be a meeting to discourage people. There should be even the pastor himself, the elders, encouraging people to go out and give out books, but not to discourage them. I also wanted to mention something about, the, the, about working on the Sabbath. I wanted to mention that if you're looking for a job, and you want to be more like secure if they give you time off on um if they give you time off on the sabbath make sure you get a written uh letter because you can be working for a different boss and if there is nothing written you could find yourself in trouble if that boss doesn't agree with your you know with your uh faith of keeping the sabbath thank you Amen. Yeah, that's, amen. that's true. Get get it in your contract, then they can't they can't go against it then because you might get a new boss. Yeah. Does it does, does it, it does it does it recognize Joseph? Joseph? Yeah. <laughs> does it doesn't recognise Joseph. Yeah. It's good recognise Joseph. Yeah. yes, that's true. Get it get it in writing. Uh, we have a brother design now. Who's hand up? I'll I'll let Sister Metron go and then I'll go. All right. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Um Yes, I just want to share with you as well the verse from Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 17 to um, 19. This is in answering of the sister who is saying about the people disputing about the distribution of the great controversy books on the Sabbath. Um, you know, verse 17 of Luke chapter 4 says, and he, uh, let me read from, no, 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 let me read from verse 16. Verse 16 says, so he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. So that's the custom of Jesus. He has no problems with people getting in the church, sitting during divine service. That is at Jesus' heart. He used to do that. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. This is great controversy in action. 
verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, that's divine service. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, that's great controversy. To proclaim liberty to the captives, that's great controversy. And recovery of sight to the blind, that's great controversy. To set at liberty those who are oppressed, that's great controversy. You see, if people... You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, talk about you know anything against the distribution of the book of great controversy. It's unfortunate that they have not read what that book contains. Jesus himself here, when we look at verse 18, all that he did it on the Sabbath most of the time to 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 to, to break the chains of those who were bound by the devil in you know demonic way, you know, sickness and uh, oppression, and you name it and everything. That was great controversy in action in a reality. But now he himself has given us through the book, he came in the volume of a book. So we have to give that great controversy on the Sabbath in the afternoon as he did himself also in the afternoon when he was not in the divine service during the time of reading as he did when he went to Nazareth on that day in the synagogue. He read, that is you know, divine service. Everyone was there, was gathered to listen. So during divine service, definitely, yes, we can't go out to say, let us give the great controversy, but because we need to hear Jesus talking to us. He visits every congregation during divine service worldwide. In the afternoon, let's do what he did in practice by giving out the books that speak about the, in the, the, the loosening of the oppression and the saving of the people who are held captive by the enemy. We have to do that after noon programs thank you yes that's true let's take our example from jesus he went to the synagogue on the sabbath preached and preached the word then he went out and did his his healing you know he might he might have done it when somebody in divine service you know was um uh, uh sick but um he was in the yeah, church, he was the, the main thing is that his his custom was to go to the church on the sabbath go to the synagogue it was also the custom of the early church uh, because the same is said of the Apostle Paul uh, that it, it was his custom uh, to go to worship God in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And that is the day that we're told that the Sabbath is a holy convocation. In the, uh, I think it's Leviticus. Um Convocation means that you convene together, you assemble together, you gather together to worship the Creator God on His holy day. The Bible says it is His holy day. It also says it in Isaiah 58, I think it's verse 13. Um, and so um, we are required to pay homage and to worship God on the Sabbath day. And also, when we gather together with others, it is to help to strengthen them in the faith. Mm. What did Jesus say to Peter? Uh, uh, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Um, and so, um, and, and people, you know, I've heard people say, uh, you know, at church that, uh, oh, God's given them a job. And then the next thing you find out that um, they're working on the Sabbath. Well, God has not given you that job if it means working on the Sabbath. God would not contradict himself and give somebody a job which requires them to break the Sabbath. So it's certainly not God who gives them the job where they have to work on the Sabbath. That's very true. If it's good, if if you're given a job and it's breaking God's commandments, then you know it's not from God. That's very true. Uh, we have desire now. Amen. Uh, thank you for all the 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 thoughts that were shared. Yeah, just to to add uh, to what everyone else has already said. Uh, just to to. To, to, to put it uh, in a different way. See, the Sabbath um, is a day that God has set apart for holy use. 
it's supposed to be uh, pra- um, oh, uh, what's the word? We, we, we need to to remind ourselves that this is the Lord's day. God has set it apart for all use. He has sanctified it. Now, God has actually showed us how we are supposed to, to keep the Sabbath. And uh, Jesus, when he came in the New Testament, remember Jesus is our example. And uh, I think somebody has just said what Jesus would do on the Sabbath. And uh, I think even uh, in John chapter 5, um, Jesus shows us how to keep the Sabbath. Uh, this is not the only instance. Uh, so sometimes Jesus would perform healing in the synagogue during the time when he was. I would like to believe that Jesus attended uh, as you can see in Luke chapter 4, he attended uh, the Sabbath school and divine service. Uh, I don't think there were two separate uh, uh, services, um, but, you know, God continues to lead his people. And I believe um, at the section we have for the Sabbath school, this is the, the teaching time. Yeah, we have the teaching time where uh, we are there to um, to educate ourselves how to be more um, effective in evangelism, uh, strengthening each other in the truth, in doctrine. This is what the Sabbath school is supposed to do. The time, you not know, just for people to come and sit and listen. The time where we have to sharpen our 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 understanding of the truth um, because we are the people of the book. Now you have now the divine service where the preacher has to break the word. Okay. We have to eat hot bread in the sanctuary. The priests baked bread every Sabbath. The priests were the leaders uh, in worship. They were the uh, uh, spiritual guides, you would say, or spiritual leaders in worship. They beg the hot bread or every Sabbath. We are supposed to receive hot bread spiritually every Sabbath. I mean, I know this can be argued now. Our pulpits now. I don't know whether some of the sermons were here. We should even call them bread because no preparation is properly done. You can tell it's not an Adventist sermon. Again, it's argue, it can be argued whether it's this, these divine services are being spent as they're supposed to be spent. Uh, and I think we can see in most places that the divine service is not well used. It's not utilized as it's supposed to be. Now, this is in rich. Sabbath school and divine service is supposed to strengthen the folk supposed to strengthen our hold on truth, our faith, our belief, our doctrine. Afternoon service, we're supposed to do outreach. We need to, 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 to you know, the devil is so cunning and he has invented all sorts of measures to keep people inside that building. God has invented all sorts of measures to keep people inside that building. And I, something has to be done. You know, in the pandemic, um, people were outside the building, but now they were inside Zoom. God is trying to get us to go out. We have the message. We have learned Sabbath school, divine service. This is our eating. This is our feeding of the truth. Now we want the afternoon service to just sit again and debate and argue. Over, It's a lot easier to do that, to just sit there or maybe pathfinders doing their thing or maybe just sit there having potluck. It sounds good and it's easy to do that. But God has called us for something greater, something more meaningful. 
the Sabbath, you notice with Jesus that healing uh, of the man at the pool of Bethsaida was on the Sabbath. So it gives you an idea what Jesus would do with his time in the afternoon. He was in the high street because that beautiful gate it wasn't inside the church. So he even orders the man to pick up his bed and walk, showing, he, showing us that the Sabbath is also a day to loosen the burden of those who are, are troubled spiritually. Go out there. We're giving out great controversy. We're singing hymns. We even pray with people. Some people need prayers in the street. Or maybe somebody wants to visit uh, uh, somebody who is in prison, uh, prison ministries, and you do. It's not supposed just to be about us. You know, having fellowship with God on the Sabbath means having fellowship with one another in the house of God, but also loosening the bands of those who are outside, who are heavy laden with sin. They need um, us, God is using us to loosen the burdens uh, that they, I mean, the, the the heavy laden that they are they are carrying. Um, uh, and you notice that you go out there and you meet somebody who will thank you for that book, who will say thank you. You know you are loosening the burdens of iniquity. You know you are doing the work of God. So the idea that uh, going out in the afternoon is in some way disrupting uh, 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 or rather um, and not appropriate on the Sabbath. I mean, there's no, I, I can't think of any polite way to refute that idea because this is what I think we need to be educating ourselves. Um, the devil is not going to sit down and let us do the work of giving out, especially the book of the controversy. And he's going to come with more to fear from within than from without. It is our pastors who are going to stop us. And some of most of the times they're not going to come in a in a harsh way to stop you. They will reason with you. But we have to know our 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 calling. We need we need to 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 realize that we have a higher calling. God has so much expectations. If we keep going to church, because you see, during the week, it the best thing is not just to do witnessing on the Sabbath. We're supposed to be doing witnessing every day of the week, especially the Sabbath. So, if somebody now decides in the Sabbath afternoon, I think we discuss this. Um, I'm going to go out for nature. But we need to avoid just staying in a building. This is what we can't do. Amen. Yes, thank you for those thoughts. I think we're all oh. in agreement that Sabbath afternoon is the you know, is a best a, be a better time to do it and not not to miss the services in the morning. Um, because you, you need to be fed yourself before you can feed others if you've got nothing yourself hopefully you get a decent sermon or, so, or a decent Sabbath school lesson that will uh, build you up spiritually but that's not always so but you know um, we've got to uh, do what we can when we can uh, Sister Ingrid is that a new hand? Uh, Sister Dorothy. Sorry, no. Uh, is my hand you. up? It shouldn't be. Yes, your hand's up, yes. Oh. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, thank you, Alan, reading that. This is just so helpful to hear what everybody else has got to say and what their convictions are. And for me, I believe that we have enemies of the truth within. And when the Lord convicts you on or me to do the work, we should never listen to anybody. You just go, we don't need to 
confront them or have a confrontation about it or fight with them because they are more than you. Because in many churches, there are little groups here and there who are waking up to our mission. The reason why God raised Seventh-day Adventists. Once we read the spirit of prophecy and understand you, you know, this new movement trying to stop this work from going forward, especially the great controversy distribution. Um, if we understand the reason for our existence and read in details, no one is going to stop you. You will refuse to be stopped. I will just, I, I, I just feel it. I'm sure most of you do this work. You feel it in your bones. It's in you. You know why you are here. So if anybody tries to stop you, you just know what we were told. We have far more to fear from within than without. Which seven-day Adventist hinders this work from going forward? It is a seventh-day Adventist who does not believe spirit of prophecy and that Ellen G. White was inspired. That individual, if they are in position, they will do whatever they can to call what you are, you know, to, uh, to try and stop the work from going forward. So we have to know who we believe. We have to know who we are and what God has called us to do. And with humility, I respect the leadership. I respect anyone. But when it comes to what God has said to go forward with this book, I will go by his grace. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Yes, uh, um, I, I'm, I'm happy that we're all in agreement that, uh, you know, what's the, what the right thing is to do on Sabbath. Have we exhausted this paragraph yet? <laughs> any more thoughts? Okay, I don't see any more hands. Let's go move to the next slide. Can I just say before you move on, uh, okay. sister, then? The people who suggest bad idea that uh, this cannot be done Sabbath afternoon. These are people who are not doing anything for yeah. evangelism. Mm -hmm. uh, who have no burden for souls. And these are some people who seemingly, uh, well, rather who appear to be concerned about the welfare of the church well our church has a mission if you look at uh, the book acts of the apostle uh, maybe let me just read this first paragraph it's a powerful paragraph because we have to remind ourselves the reason of our existence you know we're not just an organization you know this the sad thing is there's many people who don't actually understand who we are and why God called us into existence. Um, it's the chapter called God's Purpose for the Church. I'm just going to copy the first paragraph um, of uh, this, this book because this um, is our mission charter, you know. Says here, the church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of men. Uh, that line has to sink in because God's church is his appointed agency for the salvation of men. Now, if they have suggested that we can't do it on the Sabbath. When did they suggest that we should? Well, I mean, we can't even take that suggestion anyway, because here we're not talking about when we can't do it, because we need to be talking more of how often, how more we should be doing this, not cancelling the little that is being done, because it's supposed to be done every week. Now, if somebody comes and say, we can't even do the little that has been, that is being done, 
Now you know whose spirit is that because this is our appointed mission. It says it was organized for service. Its mission is to carry the gospel to the world. Now again, what's the mission of the church? Is to preach to ourselves and to have potluck. No. The mission of the church is to carry the gospel to the world. From the beginning, it has been God's plan that through his church shall be reflected to the world his fullness and his sufficiency. The members of the church, those uh, those whom he has called out of darkness into his marvelous light, are to show forth his glory. The church is the repository of the riches of the grace of Christ. And through the church will eventually be made manifest even to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. The final and full display of the love of God. Ephesians 3 verse 10. So if the little that's being done is being called out, uh, uh, the little flames that are supposed to be increased are being blown off, then you know that something seriously wrong is going on. So just wanted to say then that we, Sister White goes on to say in the book where controversy that if unity can be afforded with compromise, I think it's chapter two where controversy, I'll share that quotation as well. Um, let there be division. Yea, even war. Um, because you see, when Satan entered the church, chapter two, the era of spiritual, uh, it's called the era of spiritual darkness. Satan, remember, has been, had been, uh, it was, was persecuting the church using pagan Rome. But that chapter describes how Satan changed strategy. There's two things we have to be careful for as God's people. If Satan does not, the first thing that Satan does is to try and make you compromise. This is the first thing that he'll get you to do. If you say no to compromise, then he resorts to persecution. So what is compromise? Is laying aside or putting away all that conviction of duty that God has put in your mind, in your heart, because you want to please the brethren or you want to meet in the middle ground with the brethren. We don't want to offend the folk, but we'll meet halfway. They'll speak to us nicely. But if the resolve is to lay down the conviction, then you know it is compromised. But again, we should be expecting also persecution. If we decide we're going to stand for our conviction, then we should be ready for persecution because them people, you will see now their true colors. If you say, well, we've decided to do this for God because we, in, we know we have a conviction, we'll do anything we can as long as we don't cross the lines of conviction, you will see the true colors of the brethren. So um, I think as God's people, we should be ready for persecution um, because it's going to come. Uh, there's no other way we can avoid it. Those who shall live godly, who shall do the, his demands and his requirements, uh, will have to suffer persecution. And it's more inside within than from without. Amen. Amen. Yes, thank you. Thank you for those thoughts. It's a, uh, we do, ex you know, we, we are to expect persecution, but it's, it's hard when it comes from the church. You know, you get criticised and things. Um, it's usually by those who do nothing. Mm. Yeah. Apart from the, the ministry of criticising. <laughs> True. Let's just, are there any more hands? I don't think there are. I don't think, yeah, we'll just... I'll just move to the next slide. Well, there's little boys asking, if God made the Sabbath, 
my money and who made this one pointing to Sunday. I just thought that was, um, you know... Appropriate. <laughs> appro yeah, um, people, you know... Um, children often sometimes ask, you know, they can see inconsistency in things and, um, you know... Um, you know, uh, and uh, say things that uh, are appropriate. And we will go to the next slide. Um, well, it's half past now, so um, just more or less half past. So I think we'll deal with this one tomorrow. Um, we're going to um, like to thank everyone that's taken part. And we're going to finish with a song called Like the Leaves of Autumn. If we ever find ourselves too busy to pray throughout the day of this world are so shallow they only last for a while they don't bring true happiness peace of mind can't be found the dreams of this world are like flowers they bloom then they fade like the leaves of autumn, they wither and fall to the ground. The way of the world is seeking to be first through selfishness. Getting all that you can and nothing can. What do you have if you gain the whole world and in the end lose your own soul? True blessings in life come from serving Christ and not following the world in its greed. The pleasures of this world are so shallow. They only last for a while They don't bring true happiness Peace of mind can't be found The dreams of this world are like flowers They bloom, then they fade and die Like the leaves of autumn They wither and fall This world are so shallow They only last for a while They don't bring true happiness Peace of mind can't be found The dreams of this world are like flowers They bloom and they fade and die like the leaves of autumn, they wither and fall to the ground. Like the leaves of autumn, they wither and fall to the ground. Just like the leaves of autumn, they wither and fall.
Thank you again, everyone that's joined. Uh, Sister Metron, are you able to close in prayer for us, please? Yes, sure. Let us pray to our Father who art in heaven this morning. Father, we just want to say thank you once again that you have uh, given us this opportunity as family together to come and share these uh, uh, thoughts and messages from your word. We give you glory. We give you honor. And Lord, we thank you that you don't bring any discussions to lie to us, but Lord, go to affirm and confirm the truth that you gave from the beginning. So Father, as we are to walk away from here, help us that Father, we continue to go and search the scriptures even the more. We pray for an understanding that Lord, give us minds that are receptive to your word and the hearts that are able to receive, and the brains that are able to store the truth that shall save us and will help us as we live in this world where apostasy is displayed in every corner, in every, every, every space that we step. We pray, Father, that we will be able to remember these messages and the discussions that we had today. Father, forgive us of our sins. And Lord, help us that we will not be caught up by the spirit of indolence. We pray for the spirit of discernment, my Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. That as we journey on in our faithful um, and Christian walk, we will be able, Father, to stand on the platform of truth and to be able, Father, to share with others that are still caught up there in darkness deceived by the enemy who has come to deceive the whole world. So Father, we thank you this morning as we shall disperse from this line. May you keep each and every one of us safe. Some are not well physically. Uh, meet them, Father, at their greatest point of need. Some in their homes, some in hospitals. Some are continuing to bereave, Father, for they have lost, they have lost their close member of their families. Father, may you continue to uh, encourage them and strengthen them in their journey of bereavement. And so, Father, we continue to place our children into your care, Father, that as they uh, go up and about in schools and uh, everywhere, Father, they meet their friends that come from homes where your name is not mentioned. I pray, Father, that you help our children not to be swayed in order to please their friends. But they may they be peculiar. May they be the ones who are to influence their other friends, Father. We thank you for listening to this prayer. And we thank you that your God is always answering. Because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for the prayer, Sister Metron. Thank you, everyone that's joined. At 12 o'clock, it will be midday prayer band. Then at 6.30, some service. Some service. We had a good one last night. We had a good night. one last night. And then 7 o'clock, it will be um, uh, Elder uh, Richard Pierce. He'll be giving uh, another message. And they are strong messages this is giving. Um, so that's why they're going on Rumble. <laughs> um, so, um, so have a nice day, everyone. Are there any more announcements, uh, Elder Desire? Oh, no, I uh, just thought maybe I'll just say thank you to all those who um, send their donations um, um, to support uh, the ministry with um, uh, curbing the, the costs, traveling costs and accommodation costs for our speakers. Uh, just to say, Brother Hudson texted me early yesterday morning saying he had um, landed safely in New York. Amen. So I want to thank God for traveling messes. I think um, everybody got home safely. Let's now pray earnestly for the next event in, uh, in March, end of March. Amen. Amen. We look forward to that event. Yes. So have a nice day. Remember, all lead, all roads lead to Kevin Lee for the, I think it's the 25th to the 31st. And it's nice there in spring, isn't it? It's nice. We've got the lambs in the fields. Yeah. You know, it's it's now nice, nice country so I do a bit of country living while we're out there. <laughs>
<laughs> walks up the mountain. Oh, you, you must come. You know, you don't know what you're missing if you don't come. <laughs> Have a nice day, everyone, well, and see you Sorry, sisters, sisters, before you go, can I just interrupt quickly? Uh, I haven't seen a, a notice of a half-night prayer yet. Is it still going on? This is the last Sabbath of, of, the, of the year. Um, it was mentioned on the on the committee group that because there's a lot of things going in on, on the churches, um, it may not go ahead this one. I don't know. Um, okay. I, don't, I don't think there's a decision being made, but there's lots of things going on Sabbath and Sunday in the churches that people may want to attend. So okay. it's not there's not a decision hasn't been made yet, but we'll um, as let, soon as soon as, yeah, as soon as people as soon as the decision's made, then we can let you know. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So have a nice day, everyone. It's raining here. I don't know what it's doing in your place or gardening's out of the question. Definitely. <laughs> have a nice day, everyone, and see you all later, by God's grace. Have a blessed day. Goodbye. Blessings, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.